Today I'll be joined by two legends who really, really don't don't need introductions. Um, the first is acclaimed composer. If you saw uh, When They See Us, if you saw King Richard, you know his work, Chris Bowers, alongside award-winning, um, Academy Award-nominated director of some of our favorite films, classics like Fruitville Station and Black Panther, uh, Ron Coogler. How you doing? Good, D. Hang it, man. Congratulations um, on the film. The first thing, when I first saw the write-up and description, I was like, didn't Young Jeezy redo the national anthem? I know, my president is like, no. And I was like, <laughs> then I'm like, no, nah, we, 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 you know, we, we had a different level. Um, and it, I, I think it's such an important film um, because of how sensitive people are around the subject matter of the song. So um, I, I, we should just start off by just talking about um, what does the song actually mean to you? Uh, as far as the song, I think the song means to me just like it's the beginning of a conversation. It's like it's uh, uh, it's actually a conversation in song form. You know, each person getting their moment to speak and share their story um, and then find a way to, you know, have some sort of common ground, essentially. You know, and I think that uh, as far as it being like a starting point, it's really this whole project is really about the process more than anything right. else. And like, you know, it, we could have made whatever song we were going to make, but the process was the most like impactful thing. And that that feels like, you know, it carries through the song. But because the process was so important, it really is our hope that people take the song, and continue to do that work to it, like continue to bring their story to it, their sound to it. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to invite as many people to the table as possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for me, I, I, I came involved with the, with the film through our, our filmmaker, Pete Nix, uh, who had a relationship with Chris. Um, we, we founded a company called Proximity Media. Uh, it's me and my wife, Zinzi Kugler, our friend, Shav O'Hanion. Um, and and along, along on the journey with us later on, we came, came Pete Nix, who runs nonfiction for us. Right. Um, Ludwig Yoran's son and Archie Davis, who run music for us. And um, we, we looking to tell stories um, that bring audiences in closer proximity to subject matter that's often overlooked, and, and specifically through eventized entertainment. And, and Pete had this idea when he, when he, when he came aboard, um, and we loved it, man, because it it's, it's ambitious. And, and what the film is, 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 is taking a, a look at the national anthem, um, you know, you know for, for a few minutes, kind of just studying and breaking it down, like where the music came from, um, its origins, how it became, uh, the song that we that we play at graduations and before sporting events and what have you. Right. But but what's great about it is you know, that's only the first you know five, five minutes or so of the film. Um, you know he finds these, these incredible musicians, Chris Bowers and and, and Dahi, and, and they go on a, on a road trip on a mission to uh, answer the question, what would an anthem sound like if it was written today? You know, um, and then they make the song. You know, all all, all in, the, in the film uh, and the song that they make. I think is, is, is just absolutely beautiful, man. And, and I think it's gonna be a utility for people to, to, to use and go to, you know, um, um, and whatever rituals they wanna use it in, you know. Did you guys grow up with the, the Black National Anthem? I did. Yeah, Where, same, yeah. Yeah, it looks like you're seeing, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's crazy because uh, like my high school, um, I went to Dunbar High School in Baltimore. We didn't have any white students. And I didn't really know, like, um, I mean, we've noticed Star Spangled Banner, but we didn't like, we never sang it. You know what I'm saying? And then when right. you get older and you study a little bit and you understand why, like, um, you, you're, you're a revolutionary uncle. You always got that one uncle, like, you know, bandana and shit. Like, nah, don't stand up for that. He's <laughs> telling you not to stand up for it, right? So yeah. um, I've been writing about it for a while. And um, what I do know is that in the, everyone always, we always hear the first stanza, but in, in the third stanza, there's a line that goes, I don't want to mess it up. No refuge could save the hireling enslaved from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And that was Francis Scott Key's message to slaves that wanted to fight with the Brits because they would, they would promise freedom yeah. if, if, if they would have if they would have won the war. So yeah. um my question is um How, when people know this history, and a lot of that history is in the film, like you guys do a great job of talking about the many different faces of the anthem. Why are so many people still willing to cling to that song, knowing what's attached to it? I think it's the same reason why, you know, people cling to like idealized 
versions or, or stories about family or ourselves. You know, like I feel like there's always trauma in any family. Like, and I think about any trauma from my like ancestors, my grandparents, my parents that they experienced. I feel like you know they don't really want to to talk about the hard stuff that much. And, and I think that like uh, there's uh, you know this overwhelming feeling sometimes that if you look at that darker moment that we're gonna be stuck there or that like it's gonna tarnish the, the beauty of what we have. And right. I feel like what this film does that I really appreciate is like it shows that looking at that darker thing only makes what we have now more beautiful or what we can have more beautiful, you know? And so I think that like people that want to ignore any of the darkness are really just trying to like hold on to the facade of, of something that's really, um, to them feels like safe or or whatever it might be but but I think that you know through exploring conversation and and like being open about those things like we try to explore in this film is really just about how you can hold in balance the darkness with like an optimistic uh, look toward the future and and you know have some sort of beauty out of that pain absolutely yeah, yeah I, I think I mean I, I think Chris spoke about it beautifully um and it's hard to say right because like this whole concept man um it's, it's we, we in new york city right now right and they say it's eight to ten million people here right now individuals you know you know what, you know what right, i'm saying right and, and you'll still hear people say oh yeah new york is this or new york is that you know what i'm saying and in many ways that's like a you know that's like an oversimplification you know you know what i'm saying that you have to do so if you ask me why do some people cling to to to, to something that that is that is the knowledge is out there that it's very flawed, you know. Um, everybody has their individual reasons, you know. Right. Um, if, if we were to try to like blanket it and, and, and simplify it, you know, I think that that this country, um, like many others, but but maybe more than a lot of others, because it's so young, it, it's very um, tied to, to specific narratives. You know what I mean? Like 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 there's there's a, there's a story of America. There's the American dream. You know, like like there's you know a lot of these. A lot of these things that, and there's just stories that we tell ourselves. Um, some people tell a different story about the place, and some people they can sleep easier with a with a certain with a certain story. You know, everybody got a different perspective on that story. You know, um, and, and, and for and for them, you know, what I think is great in the film is that they look at it through both an emotional perspective, but also like a straight up scientific perspective. What is this music from? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it was a, the, the music was from a, from a British pub song. They sang it while they was drinking, drinking the ale or whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, and they asked the, the critical question, why is this the music that we, that we sing? If this was about uh, coming a time when the country was fighting the British, why would, why would, why would the song even have this, have this music associated with it? You know, um, and then from there, what is American music? You know, and then, and then what I love about it the most is that it's constructive. You know what I'm saying? It's not just um, being critical of some. It's actually constructing something, something new that that can be put up, you know, and, and used as a utility. Whether it's in that argument, or whether it's why you want to sing some music, you know. What was the wildest thing that happened while you were on the road? <laughs> uh, unexpected. You know, it's funny. I was actually expecting more like craziness to happen. I think <laughs> that like I was like mentally preparing myself to like have experiences that that you know, um, uh, shocked me, but like, there wasn't that much. I mean, honestly, I feel like it wasn't a wild experience. I think that something that was really interesting to me, we had conversations with people outside of the film that just like happened to be like, you know, cleaning up at the, at the venue or right. like opening the venue for the night after we finished uh, our filming. And a couple of them talked about the anthem. And like, I remember in, in Detroit, there was a woman that came into the club afterward and she's like, oh, I love that you guys are doing this thing about the national anthem. Like, I love that song. It means so much to me. And Dahi was like, you know, like, yeah, and not, and not everybody feels that way. And she was like, I just don't understand that. I just don't really get it. And, and we asked her, like, you know, well, what, why do you love that song? And she was like, well, it just reminds me of my family. It makes me think of, like, my home. It makes me think of these things. And it was like, that's so wild. That's so wild. <laughs> yeah. Like wild ass ass. It's, it's like wild that, like, that has nothing to do with the song. It's like, it's this, this symbol now for her, for like, she hears this thing, she thinks of these other things. Like she's projected these feelings she has about her family and about all these things that she loves deeply onto this song. So now she has that, that same 
love that she has for her family for her song. It's not even a good song. <laughs> like, yo, the song is not, I mean, read it, read it, it's not a good song. Yeah. Like, and then, in the, in the beauty of it, you know, you guys created something like that was far superior. We'll, we'll get to that. But like, I mean, so I, I would have asked it like, so you telling me you think Francis Scott Key is better than Lil Baby? Like, the fuck out of here. Like, yo, <laughs> evolution, like, what, like, like, yo, what we've done, you it's, know it's, what I'm it's, saying? It's, like, it's ritual, bro. Ritual. Like, it's yeah. ritual. It's like, ritual. Like, like mm. you know, she, what, what I imagine is, you know, um, she probably participated in some rituals mm -hmm. with that, that involved that song with with other things. Like maybe her family took her to ball games. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And yeah. when she hears the song, she thinks about she next to her dad with a hot dog at the stadium or whatever. Or, or right. um, you know, or, or she liked she liked a specific school where she learned it at. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I think like like rituals a lot of times can associate like like you know. It, it's, it's, it's legal now, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere. I, I never was a big weed smoker, but five only come on, you know what I'm saying? And I, I think, of, five, and man. I'm back, <laughs> like I'm, like I'm, I'm back, you know what I'm saying? Like back yeah. in the bay, I'm back with my, with my family. I'm back as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, and, and it's really like, it's really like ritual and associate, like memory association, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, five only is a great song, you right. know, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's a lot of that, you know. That's, it's, that's, I'm, I'm so happy you said that because it's very, very hard to go against ritual. Do you, do you think this country is open-minded enough to embrace something brand new that includes us all? Or is that too, is that too loaded? Is that too loaded of an idea? I think the impossibility behind it is really that we don't have the time or space maybe to have the conversations that, you know, we even have in this film. Like in this film, you have some of those songwriters that feel very differently about the country, feel very differently about the anthem. And if it weren't for this film, probably would never have been friends or talked to each other. Mm. And it's because of like putting them into the same space and allowing them to like express their feelings about things. And like, you know, going back to that woman in the anthem, it's like, it makes sense if she hears this on a surface level or hears somebody say on the surface level, like, I don't like that song if she's tying her family to that song, that's basically somebody saying, I don't like your family. And that's like not what's being said at all. Right. And so I think like you have to have a deeper conversation to get into like, well, actually I don't like it for these reasons. And like, and I hear you about your family. Like I actually respect your family, like all these different things. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually like move forward from there. And I feel like, we just don't have time for that, and like there's just millions. So we of being people. on phone, we being on phone too much. <laughs> we can't be having a real conversation yeah. about unity. We gotta check out, you know, notifications. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also with social media, like you're talking at people, you're not talking like with people. So like I feel like yeah. we're just breeding this culture of like I'm gonna say what I gotta say, and then I'm I'm out. Right. Like I'm not trying to listen. Yeah. I think the, the beauty of the film is um, I, I think this film can only be made by people who are very accomplished because you get a chance to pull back from the grind of being an artist and pour into things you care about. Is that true? And if so, can you talk about, can you talk about just being able to create the work that, um, that is meaningful and that speaks to you the most? I mean, I think, um, I, I definitely went into this like feel, being, feeling like I was a student. Like, I think that like, that was what's fun for me is like, um, I'll never forget, I did this show once with a, uh, an indie rock band, and like at the time I was like a jazz student, and like I was like, oh, like it's easy music. And I showed up, and like they all had like sounds dialed in, and like they knew the music already, and I was like really out of place, and like I didn't know how to get the sound. Like I just was recognizing immediately that I looked down on this music, and I was the one that was like ill prepared for the situation. Mm. And I feel like, and that happened when I was like maybe like 20 or something like that. And so I feel like ever since then, I've always, looks for moments where like I'm gonna have that beginner's mindset of like I don't really know and like you know we go on this road trip and there's some genres that I actually don't really know very much about and there's some that I I maybe knew a little bit more about but in each of those spaces I just wanted to like ask questions and learn and I feel like that that was um, uh, fun for me so I, I definitely feel like you know because I've I never feel like I can stop learning and, and, and growing as an artist like uh, it's it's nice to have a situation where that's kind of facilitated. Yeah, Pete, Pete's not here, um, our, our filmmaker, right. uh, but but, but I, I was very confident in him, and I agree with you in terms of like this being a film that that, that would have to be made by people who really knew what they were doing and had a lot of experience. Um, Pete's made a film, you know, uh, 
about the American healthcare system. Uh, he made a film about police reform when he embedded himself with, with a, you know, a really controversial police force um, at a time when like a lot of scandals erupted. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, made a film about public education. You know, he he he's he's got a lot of chops in being in a lot of difficult environments. You know what I mean? Like um, being able to allow people to express uh, conflicting opinions. And, and the film still holding it, you know. Um, so, so the film was in good hands, and it, and it actually like goes down easy when you watch it. You don't think about like like how <laughs> how crazy of an idea it is, you know. What I mean, there's tension there in terms of like, are they gonna get it done? Um, but it, it took a really deft, a really deft hand, you know. Um, and it was great to be there to to to, to support it. But I, I think that assessment is correct, man. Like these people are, you know, you know, Chris Dahi, Pete, songwriters. Crazy skill, you know what I mean. Joy Harlow, um, uh, one of our one of our writers, Indigenous woman, was a U.S. poet lar poet laureate. You know, mm -hmm. the sections in the film where she just breaks into poetry and you like, you know, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so yeah, it's, it's some real, you know, you you seeing like some really really skilled artists at work. You know, did you guys change your position on the original anthem when working on the film? Was there any like like eye opening type of situation where like just found yourself wanted to like stand uh, up at a baseball game and nah, go like that. Yeah, nah, 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 I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a black man from yeah. Oakland, approaching right. my forties. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 it, it's not a, it's not a national symbol of this country. I don't have a complicated relationship with, you know. Um, but that, that, that shit, that don't make me like not American. You know, what, you know what I mean? Like, like, like. So I, I think it's, you know, it's something I wrestle with since I was. Since I was born, you know. It don't feel like it's yours. It don't feel like it's mine. I'm yeah. you from Oakland, I'm from I'm from Baltimore, yeah. you from LA. <laughs> LA. I don't yeah. feel like it's mine. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's, yeah. I don't feel like it's mine. Yeah. But you created something. You guys created something where we can uh, feel like we're playing a part. And I think that was special. Um uh, can we are we gonna be seeing more documentaries since we're dealing with the strike or Oh, that's a great question, man. Um obviously the Writers Guild is uh, in the midst of a, of a massive strike right now. I'm a member of that union. Um, obviously, expressing solidarity with all the, all the writers. And yeah, this this I'm, I'm here able to talk to you now because this work did not originate with, with WGA work. You know, right. it's, it's nonfiction. Um, had just had just been a television show or a film. I wouldn't you know be here talking to you. Um, but but uh, I think that that or a, a film a television show or a film that originated with you know. Um, fictional mm -hmm. work, you know, I wouldn't be here talking to you, but but yeah, like I think that you will see um, the effects of the strike. You know, we don't know when it's going to end, but it, it it always affects the business and what you and what you see because the work starts with writers. You know, absolutely, um, the things absolutely. that are the things that are that are able to to move forward. You know, it'll be a little bit of a ripple effect, right? But like a, like um, but I think in months coming, you'll feel the the work stoppage as an audience for sure. So what's next for both of you? Um, I just uh, I have uh, this show called Secret Invasion. Uh, it's a Marvel show that's coming oh, yeah, out. Secret Invasion. Yeah, that looks good, bro. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. really good. Um, and then um, the Haunted Mansion um, movie uh, for Disney, and then um, The Color Purple in December. Yeah. Oh, with Bliss. Yeah, Bliss. Yeah. That's big, bro. Yeah, I know. That, that. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that, stop. If it's anything that you know, we 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 in solidarity with the writers. I mean, you I have mean, to go. <laughs> yeah, depending on where that is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like I was messing yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 right, right. Promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, we big, big, big solidarity. Yeah, yeah, big solidarity. Tell everyone where they can see this, uh, this, 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 this amazing film, Anthem. Uh, it'll be on Hulu on June twenty eighth. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you.